Ah, grey monopose marines. What do we do with you now the 90s marine challenge is over? Now the dust has settled. Now the bandwagon has ground to a halt. Well, let me show you what I'm doing with mine. We know well that 90s Monopost Marines came in four flavours. Choppy, Bolty, Toasty, and Blasty. But let's not be restricted by what came on the sprue. Hobbyists have been Frankensteining their models since the dawn of time. So why stop now? Now, I've decided I wanted some spice for my vanilla Ultramarines army. And what is spicier than plasma? In the 1990s, if I wanted to buy a plasma gun for my army, I would need a blister with a metal miniature. And why would I look further? They were simple but attractive specimens. One piece metal saved the backpack, and therefore, no messing around with plastic arms and shoulder pads. Of course, you may have had bits from the rogue trader times if you'd been in the hobby that long, but not all of us were so lucky. So that's exactly what I'm going to do, dive into my extensive bits collection and spice up the life of some Monopose Marines. Based on what I have, I decided to make a special weapon marine and a heavy weapon marine. At the beginning of this project, I thought I had a spare heavy plasma gun from the RTB-13 box containing space orcs. However, I seem to have used the only one on an orc. Fair enough, it was his anyway. So instead of that spare heavy plasma gun that doesn't exist, I'm going to have to find something else. A cursory glance revealed some suitable contenders, but I settled on using this last cannon from Rogue Trader Days. At first I thought it could be an auto cannon, but clearly it doesn't have the animal mouthpiece and it seems to match up with the picture in the second edition Wargear book. It doesn't come with a shoulder pad though, or an arm. No problem. I have a few of those left over. I've also got a spare missile launcher body that can carry it. This one has been crying in my bits box for years. Nice for him to have a roll finally. Now what about the plasma gun? If I was being strictly era appropriate, I could choose this plasma gun from Rogue Trader, but I also found this plasma gun from the Horus Heresy range, and I thought it would be interesting to see how this looked, so I settled on that. With the pieces chosen, let's smash them together. I opted for a part assembly, leaving the plasma gun off one and the backpack off the other. Now the plasma gun came with one hand, but the other I needed to chop off an old arm. This is painful slicing up old pieces like this, but needs must, I suppose. There were two more obstacles in this assembly. The first was the positioning of the right arm. Had I attached the plasma gun as is, the angle would be incorrect. So I had to trim a slice off the wrist with the old knife. Don't mind me, brother. Just think of it as your next round of genetic modification. The other issue was the gem on the Aquila but the original designers got around this by having an indent on the inside of the bolt gun, or flamer, so I made my own hole with my knife and drill. There. Fits nicely. Assembling the heavy weapon marine had its own issues. The last cannon handle didn't quite reach the arm, so I added a small section of sprue to make up the difference, and then filled in the gap with superglue and bicarb. I decided to go down the Kalidor Sky Blue route for these, just like I did for most of my other Ultramarines. So both models got two coats of this colour blue. As I was painting, I wasn't really focusing on doing it in any particular order, just going with the flow of the paint. 
On one model, I decided to paint the black bits, well, black, and on another, I focused on painting the weapon red. Again, a few thin coats of red was needed for proper coverage. I shaded by lining in a mix of Canto blue with black. I highlighted first with a mix of Calador Sky, and then Lothan Blue. And second with Lothan Blue and a touch of white. Finally, in a few areas, the highest or the most pointiest parts, I painted them with just a dot of white to make it really pop. Since I decided these would be veterans, they needed white trims and a white helmet, but I usually start painting white by first painting Fenris Grey and then a mix of Fenris Grey and white, followed by lining in the recesses with Fenris Grey and highlighting with pure white. My highlights are nowhere near as sharp as they could be, but never mind, we are all a work in progress. For the Aquila, I used Avalan Sunset, shaded with Reichland Flesh Shade, and then I build back up the yellow with a fine brush and highlight the edges with dark sand. Of course, after the Aquila, I needed to paint the gem as well. In this case, I painted it red, a little darker on the bottom, a little lighter on the top going for orange. Finished with a dot of white and some gloss varnish to make it really shine. For the plasma gun, I was a little torn over the colour the plasma coil should be. I wasn't interested in doing an object source lighting effect, nor can I do that particularly well anyway. On my Hell Blasters, which I painted for 10th edition, I chose orange for the glow, but this time I went with green, even though the red and green does look a bit too Christmassy to be grimdark. Yet it does give me the excuse to use this old pot of emerald green, going all the way back to 1996. Hmm. The hinge on the lid might have gone, but inside, it still has a pleasing consistency. For the tip of the plasma gun, I started with orange and then glazed on some yellows, mixing the paint with medium and water first. And on the subject of plasma guns, let's have a think about the rules for 2nd edition. Because plasma guns were not quite the same then as they are in the hobby today. I think over the years it has become drummed into our subconscious that plasma weapons get hot and explode. However, in 2nd edition, they didn't do that. Instead, they could only be fired every other turn since they needed a turn to recharge. There was even a handy token included in the 2nd edition box to track that nuance. Now some players may question the usefulness of a plasma weapon if it can only be fired half the time, but remember that Space Marines also had bolt pistols they could fire, or they could even toss a grenade. Plasma guns rolled the sustained fire die, a special red die which was rolled after a hit had been secured. The result was either 1, 2 or 3 shots, but there was a risk that a misfire was rolled, meaning a model would have to spend their next shooting phase trying to clear the jam if they wanted to fire it in subsequent turns. When fired, plasma guns have a 24 inch range. Their short range was 0 to 6 inches, which was important, because if the target was at that range they would get plus 1 to hit. Strength was 7, damage was only 1, and the save modifier was minus 2. I highlighted the plasma coils with a lighter green, and I highlighted the raised areas of the red weapons with orange. All that was left to do on these was to add a few more details, such as grey on the backpack pipes and vents, and to paint the skulls which I cheated by painting white first, and then using skeleton horde contrast paint on top. Next it was time for the transfers. This time I resolved to use the correct symbols on the right shoulder pads. Again. It was a simple process of first of all putting down a coat of gloss varnish, then a coat of micro set, then applying the transfer, and some micro sol on top of that to allow the transfer to conform to the shape of the shoulder pad. 
Then I sealed it in with some more gloss varnish. And finally, a layer of matte medium for the base. It had to be Goblin Green, of course. I use Army Painter Goblin Green. It's not the original shade that Citadel released, but it will do as a compromise. The finishing touch was Flock on the base, attached and sealed with dilute PVA glue. And there we have it, two Monopose Marines, lightly customised with old and new bits. I think they look pretty good with the others that I've painted. They'll allow for some variation in war gear choice when deploying these models on the tabletop. Either that or maybe I'll have to paint some more marines to make a complete squad. If you like what I do, please have a look at my Instagram page as well. And with that, I had better go paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching.